Seeing your child have a true friend is a wish of every parent. However, what if you find out that your child's best friend is not seen by others? In today's movie recap, a children's book author faces the nightmare of her past once again as they return to her old home. A woman named Jessica, is terrified and hiding from an unknown entity. While hiding, she sees pliers with a freshly pulled tooth. Suddenly, his father appears beside her, with his tooth removed. Startled by his sudden appearance, Jessica runs away in fear, realizing he's a monster in disguise. When she looks back, he reveals his true form, causing her to retreat in terror. Strangely, Jessica's location suddenly changes. As the entity approaches, she enters a room and sees herself sleeping on the bed. She tries to wake her sleeping self but is attacked by the monster. As the monster attacks, Jessica wakes up from the nightmare, and her husband, Max, immediately comforts her with a joke. Jessica gets up from bed and tells Max that her nightmares are starting again. Max, familiar with this, knows how to console her. That morning, their whole family arrives at their new house, Jessica's former house where she lived as a child. Max has two daughters from his previous relationship, Alice, the youngest, and Taylor, the eldest. Jessica tries to bond with them, but Taylor seems to dislike her. While unpacking, Jessica finds an old video recorder containing videos from her childhood. Max comes inside the room and talks to her about the kids. Later that day, Alice enters Jessica's room while she's painting and expresses her fear of Simon, a character from Jessica's book. Jessica laughs and explains that not all bad characters in her story are purely evil, some also have goodness, like how Simon helps Molly the millipede. Alice notices Jessica's stress with her work deadlines, so she invites her to take a break and play with her. Jessica is pleased to hear this from her stepdaughter and agrees. Alice starts counting while covering her eyes, while Jessica hides. Jessica intends to hide inside the house, but her editor calls to check on her progress, so she steps outside to talk, leaving Alice to look for her. Unable to find Jessica, Alice goes to the basement, thinking she might be there. In one corner of the basement, Alice finds a teddy bear, which she names Chauncey. She hugs it tightly and carries it up to her room. A few minutes later, Jessica finished her conversation with her editor, so she went to apologize to Alice. She tried to play with the child again, but Alice said she already had a new playmate. Meanwhile, Taylor was taking selfies to post on her social media. When she looked at the picture she took, she felt a chill seeing an old woman in the distance staring at her. She looked out the window but saw nothing, so she went outside to see where the woman was. However, she found no trace of the old woman. While looking for the old woman, a boy next door named Liam approached Taylor and invited her to hang out. Jessica caught Taylor being invited by Liam to a bar where it does not require an ID. Jessica brings Taylor back inside the house as she hears what Liam said. As usual, Taylor showed annoyance towards Jessica even though Jessica was just concerned about her. That evening, Jessica heard Alice talking to someone and assumed she was just talking to her imaginary friend, so she let her be. Max arrived and shared that he also had an imaginary friend when he was a child. When they returned to the room, they saw Alice standing, waiting for them. She said she was playing hide and seek with her imaginary friend Chauncey, so they squeezed her between them. They went along with the child's game, hiding under the blanket with her in the middle. A few moments later, Jessica heard a strange sound, so she checked where it was coming from. She looked under the bed and eventually got jump scared by Alice. They all laughed at Jessica's reaction, unaware that Chauncey was under their bed. The next morning, while Jessica was busy with household chores, she heard Alice once again talking to Chauncey while reading her book. Later that day, Jessica started painting her works, feeling pumped up and inspired. She thought Chauncey was helping her get ideas, so she shared it with Max. Just then, Alice arrived carrying Chauncey, who was playing a scavenger hunt with her. Jessica indulged Alice and set aside her work. Their scavenger hunt was about happiness, so Jessica painted a blue ball with a smiley face. That night, Jessica was startled by a noise in the basement, so she immediately went to check it. Thinking it was Alice's doing, she told her it was time for bed. Strangely, when she opened the basement door, she saw the blue ball with a sad face on it. Still thinking it was Alice's doing, she went down to the basement and found her childhood artwork with a drawing of a door and the words never ever. Not finding Alice in the basement, Jessica went upstairs to look for her. From a distance, Jessica heard Alice chatting with Chauncey again, finding it cute, so she decided to record a video to show Max. She caught Alice sitting at the table with Chauncey, feeling delighted as she continued recording. However, her smile faded when she noticed there were three of them. Before she could see the third person sitting there, it quickly hid, causing concern for Jessica. As she entered Alice's room, Alice suddenly said, she says she is right behind you. Jessica turned around, only to be tackled by a woman from Alice's room. It was Samantha, the biological mother of the two girls and Max's ex-wife. The police arrived moments later to take Samantha back to the mental hospital due to her mental illness. Jessica wondered how Samantha found their location, and they eventually discovered that Taylor had given it to her. She apologized to her father, saying she thought their mother was okay now, so she gave her their location. While Max comforted her, Jessica stood up to check on Alice and asked if she was okay. 
Alice reassured her that she wasn't afraid because Chauncey would keep her safe. Later on, the couple heard Alice talking to Chauncey again from the bathroom. It was becoming more frequent, but Jessica said it might help Alice's mental health. Max agreed, saying that his daughter is strong. Little did they know, Chauncey was starting to tell Alice in her sleep not to leave him. The next morning, Alice approached Jessica again while she was painting. She asked for a paintbrush from Jessica, who gladly gave her one. Later on, Max bid them farewell as he had an important business trip. As they were saying goodbye, an elderly woman named Gloria approached them. She tells Jessica that she likes her art and reveals that she used to be her babysitter. They engage in conversation because Gloria is also a writer, and she continues to praise Jessica's work. Jessica asks if Gloria's grandchildren read her books, but Gloria says no and admits that she herself is a fan of Jessica's books. She couldn't help but share about her late mother, noticing Jessica's sadness upon hearing it. Gloria immediately apologizes for bringing up that subject. While they were talking, Alice approached them and said she and Chauncey were hungry. Gloria told Alice to wait as they were still talking to Jessica. Alice got angry and said that Chauncey would eat her for lunch. Gloria laughed it off and said she didn't like it when children's imaginations turned violent. Taylor interrupted them, saying she would make lunch for Alice instead. With no choice, the two stopped their conversation, and Jessica proceeded to make lunch for her stepdaughters. While preparing, Alice saw the stove and became uncomfortable, hiding her scar. Later on, Jessica glanced out the window and saw Taylor reading, reminiscent of her father. She went outside and asked Taylor if she could help watch over Alice because she needed to go out. She headed to Azalea Acres, where her father stayed, and showed him the camcorder containing memories from her childhood. However, her father didn't remember it, and he didn't even recognize her anymore. At the house, Taylor went to her siblings in their backyard. She found her sister putting bugs inside a jar, which she found weird, but she told her to continue playing. Taylor left and opened the door for Liam. When he entered, Alice appeared holding a jar full of bugs. Liam got curious and took the jar from Alice. He tried to get closer to her, but she showed annoyance and walked out. Taylor then invited Liam to watch movies together, but he wanted to do something else. At Azalea Acres, Jessica tried to jog her father's memory by recounting their memories together. At some point, her father recognized her, realizing she was his daughter. He suddenly grabbed her tightly and said that nobody believed him. Strangely, he mentioned that Jessica had disappeared, but she insisted that she had only lived with her grandmother. He began to hysterically grip her hand tightly while screaming. Fortunately, a nurse arrived and calmed Jessica's father down, prompting Jessica to say her goodbyes. Back at the house, Taylor and Liam started to watch a movie, and Liam tried to convince Taylor to take a pill. She refused, so when he saw Max's collection of alcoholic drinks, he took one. He invited Taylor, but she warned him not to touch it. Accidentally, Liam dropped one of the alcoholic drinks, so he quickly went upstairs to find something to clean it up. Alice saw this and immediately told Chauncey that she didn't like Liam either. While searching for cleaning supplies, Liam was startled by a sound coming from Alice's room. He entered the room and as he reached for the music box playing, it suddenly stopped and went silent. He also heard a girl's voice inside the room, mimicking what Alice had said. While in the bathroom, Liam noticed a string and followed it until it led him to a teddy bear covered by a towel. Suddenly, the teddy bear appeared beside him, startling him and causing him to stop peeing abruptly, resulting in discomfort. When he looked back at the towels, they seemed to vanish like bubbles, so he assumed it was just a side effect of the pill. As he exited the hallway, the lights started to flicker one by one, and he paused when he heard a voice warning him not to mess with Alice's belongings. Thinking that Alice was teasing him, he attempted to catch the string until he accidentally stepped on it. Upon stepping on the string, the teddy bear hidden under the towel suddenly emerged and lunged towards him, startling Liam and causing him to sit down abruptly. Taylor arrived at the scene and was puzzled by Liam's reaction. Simultaneously, Jessica also arrived and confronted Taylor. Jessica then reported Liam's behavior to his mother, resulting in him being scolded and sent home. Before leaving, Liam stared in disbelief at Alice, who continued to taunt him while holding the teddy bear. After they left, Jessica reprimanded Taylor, and upon reaching the painting room, they discovered that someone had vandalized Jessica's artwork. Taylor immediately denied any involvement, so Jessica decided to go to Alice's room. Jessica found Alice pretending to be asleep and acknowledged that she knew Alice was not really sleeping. She apologized to Alice for leaving them alone for a while, but emphasized that it was not right for her to destroy other people's work out of anger. She shared her own experiences with her father before he became mentally ill. While sharing her past with Alice, the curtain in the room suddenly opened. Jessica glanced at it and sees Alice in the backyard. She realizes that the figure lying down was not Alice, so she removed the covering blanket. To her surprise, she found Chauncey lying there instead. Jessica reread Alice's checklist and saw that it said she should do something that scares her. Meanwhile, outside, Alice was preparing wood with nails as part of one of the scavenger hunt tasks. As Jessica reads the scavenger hunt instructions, she finds them disturbing, especially the commands that could cause harm. While absorbed in the paper, a shadowy figure resembling a man stares at her from behind. 
Outside, Alice sees the nail as flower and attempts to pierce her hand with one. Fortunately, Jessica intervenes just in time to stop Alice from harming herself. Later that evening, Jessica calls Max to apologize and inform him about what happened. While the couple talks on the phone, Alice listens intently from upstairs. The following day, Jessica contacts a psychiatrist named Dr. Alana out of concern for Alice's mental well-being. During the interview, Alana sets up a camera and questions Alice about her imaginary friend, Chauncey, who Alice brings into the room with her. As they converse, Alana delves deeper into Alice's relationship with Chauncey. During the interview, Alana brings up the incident where Alice attempted to harm herself. Alice mentions that Chauncey doesn't want to talk about it, so Alana suggests that she talks to Chauncey directly about it. Facing Chauncey, Alice expresses her fear about what he made her do, and Chauncey responds in the same voice. As they exchange words, Alana listens, initially thinking Alice is puppeting Chauncey's responses and allowing it to continue. However, her concern grows as she hears Chauncey saying mean things. Alice breaks down in tears, expressing her reluctance to be friends with Chauncey anymore. Alana tries to calm Alice down, but the argument between them continues. Eventually, Alana realizes that Alice wasn't puppeting Chauncey's voice all along, as Chauncey continues speaking while Alice is crying. Alice came out of her room and ran towards her room. Alana also came out and requested to talk to Jessica privately, so she told Taylor to go to Alice first. In Alice's room, Taylor tries to console Alice as she cries. In the living room, Alana showed a child with the same case as Alice 10 years ago. Alana tells Jessica that a few days after the interview with the boy, he suddenly disappeared and was not seen again. While the video was playing, Jessica remembered something, so she quickly stood up and went to the basement. She took the box containing her artworks and belongings when she was 5 years old. Alana saw the artwork made by Jessica so she asked if it belonged to Alice. Jessica didn't tell the truth and said it belonged to another child. Soon, Jessica realizes that they need to destroy the teddy bear to end everything. However, Alana is confused about what Jessica is saying. So when Alana showed the recorded video of her interview with Alice, Jessica was surprised to see that there was no teddy bear. Alana said there was no teddy bear, so Jessica quickly checked her gallery to find the video of her with Alice. When she looked again, she confirmed that there was indeed no teddy bear all along. Seeing this, Jessica panicked and took the paper with a drawing of a door and the words never ever. While hysterical, Taylor came down from upstairs, so Jessica asked her if she saw a teddy bear. Jessica teared up upon hearing that Taylor also couldn't see the teddy bear she was referring to. In Alice's room, the door suddenly opened while she was lying on the bed, Alice woke up and called out for Chauncey. Before leaving, Alana left her colleague's number and told them to contact him. Jessica immediately took her artwork again and eventually found her drawing of a teddy bear on the side of the paper. Downstairs, Alice saw Chauncey hiding in the corner so she apologized to him. After apologizing, Chauncey presented a new set of scavenger hunt items. Meanwhile, Jessica continues to search through her art notebooks. Shockingly, she finds that the teddy bear is drawn on every page she flips through. She rushes to Alice's room, but she is nowhere to be found. In the basement, Alice gathers the items on her checklist. Shortly after, Chauncey instructs her to burn them using matches. Unable to do it herself, Alice hands the matches to Chauncey. While doing so, she notices a shadow behind her. Upstairs, Taylor and Jessica are looking for her. Since they can't find Alice, they head to the basement. However, they still don't find Alice, so they go back outside to search for her. Frustrated, Taylor starts blaming Jessica for what's happening. Jessica tries to explain that she went through similar experiences in the past, but Taylor doesn't listen. She continues to blame Jessica and walks out. While walking outside looking for Alice, she sees Liam and smiles at him. Scared to be involved with Alice again, he doesn't smile back and closes the windows instead. When Taylor turns the corner, she is surprised to encounter Gloria. She calmed her down and talked about Jessica's past disappearance. At the house, Jessica moves a cabinet and sees drawings behind it. Seeing this, she rearranges all the furniture in the room to see the drawings clearly. She also starts painting on the walls and writing strange words. Meanwhile, Gloria takes Taylor inside her house and shares with her about the place Jessica can visit. She used to believe in it, but when she witnessed it before her eyes, her mind changed. Since then, she became obsessed with researching about these entities and even wrote a book about them. She reveals that the entities feed on the past traumas of a child. So, like Jessica, Alice also became a victim of this entity. When Jessica left that house, the entity didn't disappear, it waited until their paths crossed again. While painting the wall, Jessica heard a noise outside. Upon going downstairs, Taylor and Gloria suddenly appeared. Eventually, Jessica remembered her childhood memories and informed them about it. Gloria said that Chauncey wanted to keep her for himself forever by bringing her to his realm. However, Jessica managed to escape, and now, Alice was brought there by Chauncey. Upon hearing this, Jessica thought of heading to Chauncey's realm by fulfilling the list similar to what Alice did. They didn't waste any time, gathered all of Jessica's necessities, and performed what needed to be done. 
because she needed to hurt herself, she took a pair of scissors and stabbed it into her hand. After fulfilling it, she began to light up everything needed in a bowl. A strong wind blew, but shortly after, the items in the bowl disappeared without any effect. Once more, Taylor began to blame Jessica and pressure her. Jessica didn't like this, so she spoke hurtful words to Taylor, reversing the blame onto her. After she spoke, the scissors suddenly caught fire, indicating that Jessica's hurtful words towards Taylor were necessary to fulfill one of the checklist items. Hurting herself was not enough, Jessica needed to inflict real pain. Shortly after, the door lit up, and a strong wind blew inside the basement, indicating that the ritual was successful. Since they didn't immediately leave, they were included inside the realm. When they saw the portal closing back to the other side, they wedged it open with a rock to prevent it from fully closing. Contrary to the feelings of the two, Gloria was delighted because her writings were indeed true, proving wrong those who called her crazy. While inside the realm, Jessica noticed a hole in one of the portraits. She removed it and found a room where her younger self was. The younger self ran from the portal and quickly went upstairs. Next, her father came out injured, someone had tried to take him back into the realm. Fortunately, he managed to escape and sealed the portal once and for all. Jessica teared up upon seeing the great sacrifice her father made, which eventually led to his insanity. Gloria mentioned that the moment her father looked at Chauncey's true form, millions of child imaginations flashed before his eyes. He couldn't handle it anymore and completely lost his mind. Eventually, Jessica realized that her father sacrificed his sanity to save her. While they were talking, Gloria suddenly removed the wedge from the portal, allowing it to close. It appears that Gloria had gone mad and deluded saying that the realm is a happy place where she can be young again. Before even finishing her sentence, the door suddenly opened on her side, and she was pulled by a monster with a hand resembling that of a bear. The only thing they heard next were screams of pain and agony from Gloria. The two immediately got away when they saw a stream of blood coming out of the door. While walking inside, Taylor saw a child, so she followed it. Despite Jessica's warnings, Taylor continued to follow. It entered a door and suddenly closed. When Jessica opened it again, it was heading towards a new dimension, so she looked for another way to reach Taylor. Inside, Taylor saw a child facing away in the corner. She thought it was Alice, but when it turned, its eyes were white. The kid turned on the music box, and it started to play. Before leaving, the child warned Taylor that Chauncey was coming. Taylor felt uneasy about this, so when the light from the music box approached the teddy bear poster, she turned it off. A large Chauncey then emerged from the shadows. She opened the music box again to make it disappear, but instead, the child appeared in front of her, startling Taylor. Just then, Jessica saw the way to her and rescued her from imminent danger. The two continued to walk deep into the realm to find Alice. They saw a room where a dog emerged, so they entered it. Upon entering, they immediately went to Alice's room. Finally, they found Alice. However, she does not want to leave the place because everything she wants is there, including her biological mom. Jessica said that everything was just imaginary and not to be fooled. When Jessica saw Taylor also lost in longing for her mother, she went to the cabinet and took out a book. She tore a page from it and proceeded to make artwork on the wall of the room. The imaginary mom continues to fool Alice, while Jessica continues to make the artwork. Jessica said that imaginations come true in that realm, so she helps Alice to imagine. Eventually, Jessica convinced Alice, and Taylor also helped when she saw that it was working. The imaginary mom tries to lure Alice back, but Alice said she wants to go home. Alice tried to return to the portal, but the imaginary mom intervened. She tried to take Jessica, but Taylor pushed her away. The imaginary mom got angry and revealed her true form. Seeing this, Jessica let Taylor and Alice out of the realm. Once the two were outside, the portal closed, leaving Jessica inside. Jessica tried to follow them, but she was pulled down by the floor. Chauncey was about to attack her while submerged. Fortunately, Jessica grabbed the scissors and stabbed the monster. When she descended, she headed towards the door back to the real world. She tried to lift it using the scissors, but it was too heavy. When Chauncey was close, Taylor and Alice opened it from the other side, and Jessica escaped just in time. One day, Jessica and her family visited her father. She told him stories while her family listened. One by one, they expressed their gratitude, but what caught her attention was when Alice called her mom. Jessica held her hand and removed the cloth covering her arms. She saw no scars, so she eventually realized that she was still in the realm. Chauncey transformed himself as Max and revealed to her that Alice was just a bait. They actually wanted her because her imagination was strong. Upon hearing this, Jessica said she would stay with them, so they shouldn't bother her family anymore. The entities chanted, declaring that Jessica would be with them forever and ever. Suddenly, their chanting was interrupted when Taylor struck one of them from behind. Taylor pulled Jessica away, and they headed towards the portal. Taylor entered first, followed by Jessica just in time. Jessica quickly opened the bucket containing gasoline and they spread it on the outside of the portal in order to seal it. While doing so, Chauncey managed to open it and tried to pull Jessica back. Taylor pulled her, preventing her from being taken, while Chauncey attempted to manipulate Jessica's mind. However, Alice saw this and set fire to the gasoline, 
causing Chauncey to get burned. The fire spread, eventually engulfing their house. One day, while at the hospital, they saw a bear peeking out from the couch. They got stressed out, thinking they were still trapped in the realm. However, they breathed a sigh of relief when they saw that it was just being held by a child. Realizing this, the three decided to leave the hospital. Meanwhile, the little boy mentioned that his friend was hungry. His mother reassured him that imaginary friends don't get hungry, and the movie ends.